มีโทอะมีโทอะมีโทอะมีโทโฟอะมีโทโฟอะมีโทโฟอะมีโทโฟอะมีโทโฟอะมีโทโฟอะมีโทโฟอามิคาฟอร์ริวันอ่า thank you for coming to our chapter three of Liao Fan four lessons so today I think we have to wrap up that chapter um if I didn't remember uh, wrongly I think I haven't finished the eight pairs but actually I did um eight pairs of goodness so just for revision sake is about the um accumulating goodness and he categorized into eight types of it and we have i think we have gone through that for the last two months it's been uh, two months i think to talk about this because it's fortnightly um so just to revise there is eight types and each of them are made in a pair so sorry i really skipped them okay so um kindness has real and fake uh, or true and false and the second one is crude and straight. Third one is hidden and obvious. Fourth one is um, apparent and uh, actual. So apparent on the surface and actual. And uh, one, two, three, four. fifth one is crude, um, proper and improper. Sixth one is half and full. Seven one is big and small. The last one is hard and easy. So all this is in top, um, given in a pair, and we gone through one by one with case study um, from Confucius until the time of Liao Fan. So all this just to tell us that being uh, kind, being good, uh, we if we want to get uh, to the heart of the matter. Um, actually accumulating the merits, actually deserving of merits. We need to ensure we are aware of what we are doing. And this teachings, this set of theories um, is best uh, shown through the examples of uh, Mr. Yu, who met the kitchen gods. Why? Because he's a um, more compact version of Liao Fan and he gives his, his, his himself is an example of what happens when you're not aware of the eight pairs of goodness. So thinking that you're doing good, but in actual in, in reality is not, and ends up with a lot of negative karma, which is happening to a lot of people nowadays. It's like, why did I do all this and I still have a problem on my children, on myself, on my career? So I will not go into it today. Um, I think we can read through that and I think we talked about it already. And the last one is just telling us how to cultivate goodness. So there are 10 ways to do it. And I think I emphasize on protecting the Dharma because Dharma is the one, is the reason why we're here. We're here to get clear about what happened, what is right, what is wrong, especially right now, we have a lot of things happening around us natural, human-made, all sorts of calamities happening. And if we have no Dharma eyes to help you to see through everything to its reality, to its cause and effect, you might not know, but through what thought by Master and thought by Shaimuni Buddha, we understood better and we will not uh, be swept away by this current. So beyond that, it's just being kind, being loving, uh, perfecting others, say you have um, very um, good friends or uh, you knew people who are able to do something well and you recommend them to that position in career-wise or in like temple, if they really uh, like Buddhism and then you, you introduce them to the temple of their likings, uh, encourage them to perfect their cultivations. And the uh, fourth one is, you know, like what we're doing now, um, encouraging people to be good 
And the fifth one is to say, save others in, um, in emergencies. So yeah, I should not say admin lobby. Sorry, guys. <coughs> so admin lobby, where is it? So number seven is to um, give your money. So just the act of giving. And number six is to build any um, beneficial projects. Obviously, we, we don't do that. Um, we don't build road and bridges by ourselves, but we can sponsor them. Um, number nine is to respect the elders. So this is what uh, Master Shewu has mentioned uh, in, in last week. He has emphasis so much on love and respect towards the elders, Filia Paiti. And the last one is to uh, take good care of your belongings. Uh, you know, do not waste it, food and clothing. So those are all the examples we can read in details. Uh, I will not go in there today um, because I would like to go to the actual uh, chapter, the last chapter. Um, the last chapter is chapter four. So if you have a look at chapter four, uh, it's talk, it talks about how to preserve all we did. Say you have followed through the act of, you know, understanding why your destiny is not fixed. Yeah, you can change it, but to change it, you need to start by acknowledging your faults, understand where you get wrong, where you get right, know your pros and cons, and understand the core is our heart is not pure and get, you know, move easily. And then we have to work hard on getting the goodness as well. And we already mentioned how to cultivate goodness, how to recognize what is actual good or what is not, or what is perfect, what is going towards the perfection of your virtues, what is just a temporary one. I'll bring a few examples um, before we move on to humility, because humility is the one that preserves all the hard work that you did throughout the years, throughout your whole life. Uh, without humility, everything you accumulate, uh, no matter how many, no matter how powerful or how wealthy or how uh, famous you are, it will fall short in the end. So if you look at someone else's history or someone else's uh, countries or uh, company, you have to see from its beginning how it gets started, how, it's, how it accumulates its capital in form of money, in form of virtue, in form of fame, everything needs capital to start with. If you want to start a Sangha, your capital is your virtue for many life. And Buddha has a lot of virtues to start a Sangha. If you want to start a company, obviously you need money. You also need network. For human, normal people, if you want to start a happy life, I mean, have a family and stuff, um, and have a wife and or a husband, you need to have a uh, capital of uh, your personality, your characters. You need to work, work with them, know them, being true with them, all that. This is time. So, so in, in, in the history, there are cases where someone, there's a person, he, um, he knew that he has done a lot of bad things back then, but he has um, heard from one of the people who Suan Ming, calculate his life and it's quite accurate like what Leo Fan encounter. Uh, what he told him is you have done a lot of bad deeds. You need to do good deeds in order to overcome it. And he followed through. So he moved away from the place where he caused trouble. Maybe um, I think he embellished money or something. Yeah, I think he embellished funds as a as a as a merchant. And he escaped to not yeah, kind of escaped to a small town far away from then. Back then, there's no internet, so it's hard to know who you are. So he built up a new business there, start giving all the porridge, you know, all the, all the good deeds that I just mentioned, 10 of them, and uh, trying to help all the elderly build up all the good projects. Those are good stuff. And he keep doing that for many years. Everyone knew him as a good man. So it's like, uh, I think it's Li Yuan Wai or something. It's just a title for him and they say you're a good man and everyone likes him. However, one day, there's a group of uh, army officers, police officers, um, barge into his residence and cuff him up and help him back to the courts. Everyone was like, why? Such a good person. 
and someone who knew him, I mean the official who knew, obviously he knew, and he says that this guy has been embellished funds for many, many years back. And, and this guy, after he did all these good deeds because he wanted to, he want to escape from the calamities in form of death, he has not persistent to, throughout the end. The very end of his um, new life, he started getting lazy. And he started, you know, like, I've been doing good deeds for 20 years, so I've been extending my life for 20 years. I'm supposed to pass away at this age. And I'm supposed to be, you know, caught by officers. So, you know, I can relax now. And he, when he started to relax, he started to go back to his old habits, embellishing funds or uh, cutting down the, the givings and uh, start to do some. Oh, yes, he um, met a calamities in his new home where everyone is shortage of food because back then you have to plant, you have to agriculture, you have to culture, uh, you have to plant your own crops to eat. Uh, to buy, you need to have capital. That means you need to plant a lot of crops to, to, to save for some money. So back in famine, that means it's calamities like drought or flood. No one can plant anything. So what he did is he increased the price of the food that he has because he's a merchant, he stock up. Like right now, the oil, he make it like 200 or 300 percent markup. So, this is not virtue, not moral. And because he thought, he, I've been doing all the good deeds, I've been giving all that, it's time to get it back. <laughs> so, he gave all the money he has in building projects and all that. Now, he wants to get back that money in this method, which is against the teachings and against the, uh, the actual goodness, the principle of goodness, which is pure heart. Sincerity. So he did that, and not long after that, he got caught, which is what we're talking about now. So all this story is telling us that we can change our destiny, but this destiny, if you want to change, you have to be thorough. We all have to be thorough all the way to the end. Cannot be halfway because if you do halfway, the thing we did is exactly what Leofan has said: half, not full. That means when what you, what little you earn spend away in form in form of good names. I also mentioned good names is a form of virtues. That's why you need to hide your goodness if you can. So um, so he, he has fame, he has all that, you know, praise and all that, and he enjoys a relatively wealthy life as well. So so all this fortune has spent by him. And then his the worst part is he, the heart has changed, has um, deteriorated into a form of Greed again because he was greedy. That's why he embellished funds. So all these things is to tell us that um, to be good, to be kind, we need to always have that sense of I haven't done enough. I need to keep doing more and more. And and the attitude is always supposed to be um, I really want to help people. So the opposite example is a, a real case where one of the sisters from Temple in Brisbane, she is in Singapore right now. Um, She's sharing to us about a story that she met in one of the flats in Singapore, I think. And this old lady is not wealthy or anything. She's normal citizens. And what she has is she has a patch of um, fruits. I think it's in Singapore, Australia, I forgot. But this lady is like she has a land. I think it's in Australia. She has a land. And Around her, there's a lot of students. And these students are all, you know, overseas and all that. They are leaving their family thousands of kilometers behind. So this um, auntie, or I think it's grandma or auntie, she felt like oh, everyone's been away from their home so far and they must be, you know, uh, missing their home. And, you know, they must be, uh, you know, uh, hard to buy groceries here because they don't know the place. So she gave all she has planted in her backyard to them every day or every week, depends on how many crops she has. So she gave all the crops she has and picked all the best vegetables and everything to give to the new students in, uh, in, his neighbor, in her neighborhood. And when she, I think, or her friend uh, went to visit this old, old grandma and she just asked, why do you leave all the, you know, wilted version of the crops that you have to yourself. Uh, I said, yeah, it's okay. I, I don't mind. I don't care about this. 
um, you know, like I, I, as long as I'm not starving, it's fine. So she's been doing that for many years, I think seven years, um, and and she keeps doing it until now, and everyone like loves her very much. So this is what I'm saying, like you don't need to have a big uh, effect coming out, but what what is precious is the persistence that keeps going and do it within your means. Um, this merchant might have started you know, with a good heart of change, but he wanted to change just because he wanted to earn the merits. And he wanted to earn the merits just to avoid death, short life. And this is not bad, but this is not wrong, but this is not enough. This is not the point of doing good deeds. The point of doing good deeds is not to enjoy the fame and wealth and prosperity. Those are side effects. Just like Buddha treat all his fortune like side effects. He's like, okay, yes, yes, I have a kingdom. My father loves me way too much to build four palace for me on different seasons. Um, I'm not allowed to even see someone, uh, the reality of the people outside. Uh, he also give me a lot of beautiful women, dance around me every day so that I always enjoy. But he knew all these are side effects. So, so the point is we do what we do because it's right and because what makes me happy is actually doing giving. That alone is the, is the purest form of goodness. And that kind of um, intention is what brings us, um, brings everyone together. You know, if you, if you do this kind of, uh, if you use this kind of attitude in work, in your country, in your um, place, in your family, um, you don't need to say a lot of things. By, by just seeing, looking at you, the way you treat others, they, their heart will go towards you or towards your organization, stuff like that. And that's how you create a so-called uh, peace, harmony. Because everyone will start thinking for everyone else. So how is it related to chapter four? That's why we need to be humility. Yeah, and also we need to um, treat these good things that happen to us as a matter of you know, time. Like it will come, it will go. Uh, like a transient thing, it's not permanent. And in this case, uh, Liao Fan is more concrete. He said that in I Ching, the mother of all philosophy in China, basically, uh, he said that the heavens will always reward the humble and punish the, uh, how to say, not punish, the um, take away from the arrogant. arrogance. So you take away from the arrogance and reward the humble. The land or the the ways of the land will always um, turn what is full into what is lacking, like mountains into valleys. The ghost, the spirits will always, um, what do I say, punish or prank the arrogance and protects the humbles or give the fortune blessing to the humbles. Human, us, hate the arrogance or dislike the arrogant people and always love to get close to the humble people. It's easy to get by. Um, hence, it's because I Ching was used, principle was used as like a mathematical calculation to predict what happened to the world. You can use that in recent conflict and all that as well. So it's used to calculate everything. And among everything, every one of them has opposite, like plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. But only one, one, one of the prediction, one of the aspect of this prediction does not have negative at all. It's always positive, which is brand, which is called humble. So humility is the only positive, only pos positive, only um, prediction among all the, all the scenarios that could happen. If you're humble all the time, you always benefit from it. Uh, and then the other, like Shang Shu, um, is also another Confucius classic. Uh, it says that um, if you are full of yourself, like arrogance, you will always invite harms and calamities to you. If you're being humble, you always benefit there. And he used his own time uh, to explain. Back in the examinations, um, I have seen everyone who has been awaiting outside the, uh, I mean, because back then, you, if you examine the government response to you, a place to sleep, 
all of them are staying in one place so they can see each other. So he saw, you know, like Ding Jingyu, who is being very kind, very uh, humble. In what form? Uh, in the form of uh, everyone uh, wants to, um, what is it? Everyone's trying to get number one, number one, lining up, queuing. He didn't mention in depth, but he always let other people go first. So that's number one. And he always have that uh, sense of reverence and respect towards everyone equally. So he's not like trying to, you know, be fake or anything. And he's always careful. He's always um, be cautious about his speech, um, a sense of fear, not out of threat, and threat, but out of reverence to everyone or everything. So this is exactly what Buddha has mentioned about uh, Pusian Pusa, the um, universal worthy bodhisattvas. And Pusian is like, you know, universal, everything. Everything you do is good. Uh, it's worthy, praise. In what form? First thing is Li Jing Zhu for respect all Buddhas. Who is Buddhas? They are past Buddhas. They are present Buddhas. Present Buddha is Shaimuni. Past Buddha is Kasyapa and all the past Buddhas. Future Buddha is, we call it my red year, but that is just a symbol. The actual future Buddha is everyone. Everyone is future Buddha. So in using Buddhism, it expands this further, why he has this kind of heart and why he's a perfect person to grow deep virtues and hence deserving better merits. So even better, the best part is about humility is you are able to be patient in face of slanders or in humility. Uh, when someone slander you, when someone humiliate you in front of you, uh, you do not answer. He do not answer, and he do not debate back. I think he's very calm, and his his heart is very stand, uh, sturdy. So, people who can respect the um, respect the people like him, uh, who have the ability to hold on to grudges and anything, I'm not hold on, who, who has uh, able to um, uh, uh, encounter slanders and and humiliation without a sense of, um, without rebating, debating back or anger. Um, obviously, everyone would protect him. Everyone, everything, every spirit. So he did get into imperial examination. And cases like him repeats in other people's uh, stuff. So I'm not going to repeat too much. Um, but I'm just going to bring out a negative example. So I'll just like just now I'll give you a positive and negative. This one I will give a positive example of being humble, a negative example of not being humble. So the negative example is one of the guy who has a very um, uh, how to say talent. He's talented. He's smart. Um, his words, his article invites uh, a lot of um, praise among the people in the world, in, the, in, in, his, in his view, <coughs> calligraphies and all that. And when he went to Nanjing for examination, he has failed. So he scolded, he scolded the examiner, you know, you have no eyes. Um, like, why are you, uh, like, why, why do you reject my work? Why do you reject my uh, proposition? Like, because everyone exam, they have to write out a policy or a response to a, a set of praise from the Confucius classics. So he's being angry, and when he's being angry, there was a Taoist monk standing next to him and laughing at him. And then he, of course, shifted the anger to him and said, why are you laughing at me, at my misfortune? Because um, he's been scolding out the content. Everyone knows that he didn't pass. He... Um, his article was being accepted by the examiners. So this um, Taoist monk was like, I knew firsthand when, like, I knew that your um, article would not be good. The essay you written would not be good. So uh, Mr. Zhang, his name is Zhang, by the way. You didn't see my word. How can you say it's not good? So the Taoist monk, monk says, I heard that when someone writes an article or an essay, when they want, want to write a proposition or something, their heart is always at peace. 
you know, the, the one to their heart in the they want the state of mind at peace, not anger, not too happy. So when I heard you scolding the examiners, uh, I can see that your heart is not at peace. That means your heart is not uh, equal. You are full of anger. How can you have something good coming out of that heart? Uh, of course, Mr. Zhang, being a person who study sage books, like, uh, like this book or even like Confucius classic and all that, he knew, but anger always clouds judgment. So now when hearing someone who wakes him up with this kind of uh, straight and uh, attitude, he accepts it. So he suddenly changes tune. It's like, oh, yes, you're right. Um, so he started to say, oh, please teach me how to um, change my um, attitude. How do I change my current circumstance? So this Taoist one say, if you want to get into the rank, you want to get ranked into the imperial examination, hence changing all your circumstances of your life, you need to have destiny. So your destiny needs to fix. Uh, you, you destiny needs to have you fixed into these uh, rankings. So it's set. However, if you do not, um, how do I say? If if in the in the set destiny, if you are not supposed to uh, success, you will not be success. No matter how well your article is, those are just conditions. So the only way to change it is you need to start from your own self because you're the cause of it. So you need to start by transforming yourself, that's what he said. Mr. Zhang answered that even since it's fate, like you say, it's destiny, it's fate. How do you change the fate? How do you change the destiny? And the Taoist monk has given a very, uh, this one is actually a classical term about the whole thing of, of fate and changing it. So the first thing is the one who set the destiny you know, set the fate is the heavens, it's the way of nature. But the person who establish what how destiny goes by is myself. So if you continue to do good deeds, continue to accumulate hidden goodness, hidden virtues, that means not trying to show it off and all that. Just do what is right. What? How? Why do you worry that you will not receive anything good? In future. So Mr. Zhang said, I'm poor. How can I do anything good? So everyone has a concept of being good means donate to the charities. That's it. But charity is just one part of many, 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 many things. And it, sometimes it might not even be the main thing because um, if the attitude is wrong or if you're not feeding to your own parents, how can you be good? Uh, no matter how much money you do. So back to the point is um, the Taoists say you don't need to do, you don't need to just, uh, how do I say, to, to accumulate the hidden virtues. Um, they are all started from your heart. So if you have this kind of heart of wanting to benefit others, love others, always be empathetic, always think of others' shoes, uh, obviously you will accumulate boundless merits to you. Say, being humble does not cost a money. Why did you not uh, reflect on that? Rather than uh, scolding the examiners. So he, he, he was uh, fully convinced. He understood that uh, I don't need to earn the money to, to like, I don't need to donate to good, to good deeds. I don't need to do that only. I need to start by my own virtues. So he started to uh, get in depth with all these teachings. You know, being humble, being filial, uh, being uh, kind and empathetic. And his merits gets thicker and thicker, better and better. So he accumulates more capital. Let's talk about that way. And in a few years later, he has dreamt. That means the omen comes in and tells him that he made it. So start with examination. So he dreamt an examination book. In there, there's a the registration of all the exam. Uh, students uh, and in there there is pass and fail and in this past and there's a lot of um, wiped out every name there are many names they were gone in the middle of the rankings and he asked the 
person standing next to it say, why is this ranking uh, missing? Yeah, why are why there are many names that are missing from the rankings? And this person answered, to get into the imperial examination on the underworld, there are a, how to say, reassessment every three years. So what do they reassess on? In business, we reassess based on your profits and loss and all that, you know, the management and all that. In the actual um, situation of cost, uh, merits and votes, the underworld or the people in the Yama realm, they um, always access based on your merits and virtues, plus and minus, among these three years. So every three years, they will come down, they will look at the whole records of every single person, and they will look at your merits. Is it plus or minus? Um, so if your merits did not have a big shift, like you did not do a very bad thing, or you did not accumulate too much bad thoughts, bad deeds, well, we understood from before, you don't need to do it in order to have bad deeds, bad record. You only need to think about it. And each thought already constitutes one vote. No matter how light it is, it will accumulate over time. So let alone doing it. So all these are what happening right now under, under our, uh, beyond our ability to see, but what is it, but it tightly related to us. So every three years, he will look at the name, he will look at his, uh, like a police record, he will look at the plus and minus. And then if that person did not do accumulate a lot of bad deeds, um, then his name can stay. If his name is gone, that means something's wrong with his um, action. His deed done indecent or not, um, not up to standard. So he has point a last line on the book and talk to Mr. Zhang. So these three years, you have been very, very cautious. You have been very, very um, careful about your word, your speech, your action. So I think your name can stay here. So your name will be filled back in because remember he failed. That means his name was taken away. So thank goodness you, uh, you have self uh, respect. So he got number one and five, 105. So at least he got it. So he got the salary and all that. So from that, you can see that no matter where you go, no matter where you are, especially when you're alone, uh, in the old saying says that if you look at your head, three inch above your head, there is a God who records your kind deeds. If we use what the... Um, Master Ching Kong's recent teaching. Like, you don't need to look three inch above you. Inside already has. Everything you thought will have implication, cause and effect. Because everything arises from the heart. Ichie Fa Yu Xing Xiang Sen, according to uh, Avatam Saka Sutra, Flower Adorno Sutra. So you don't need to look three, three inch hard, hard up. You just need to look inside. It's already happening. So, um, Back to the point, if you want to go towards fortune and leave calamities behind, which is what we need right now, like right now in our world, we always start from ourselves. We need to start from restraining ourselves, not just from the action, but also the way we think, the way our intention. Um, how do we do that? So that uh, we need to have that mind that I do not want to uh, anger the uh, heaven and the spirits or the eyes of everyone. You know? uh, always empty out your heart, uh, always uh, humble yourself um, so that the heavens and the, uh, the spirits always uh, empathetic, sympathetic towards me. This kind of person has the ability to uh, receive vast fortunes in many forms, just like Valley who can accept all sorts of things, good things, bad things, sewage or mountains, but he can accept everything inside his big heart so that it becomes a strong foundation for whatever is happening in the future. Because people who, has, who are full of themselves, they are not one who can last long in any way, in whatever they are 
endeavor, whatever they will pursue. 彼弃隐者，必非远弃。If your heart, if your chi, I mean, if if your attitude, everything is full of yourself, arrogance. That's what we call it. Then, no matter what you do, you will not last long, because you will make a lot of mistakes. You will easily jump, and make a mistake that you can never retreat. So we can use this to reflect on current situation. Uh, <coughs> if you, even if you get fortune by any chances of your past fortune, anything, even you got、uh, into you know whatever you want, you get what you want temporarily. Uh, you can't use it for long.、Uh, people who slightly have awareness of what's going on with this, you know, merits and faults,、uh, big heart, big fortune, small,、uh, narrow-minded, no fortune. They will not,、uh, how to say, they will not have the heart to narrow themselves. They will not have the, the, they will not dare to narrow themselves, and because narrowing yourself means. Narrowing the capacity to receive good fortune. So this whole teaching is not saying that we should not think about、uh, merits and all that. It's rather that we know that merits will come either way. The problem is, are we able to take it? Sometimes, if merit is too much, I mean, if fortune is too much, that falls on your shoulder, it might crush you and your whole family along with it. Some people can't take. That much because they will change immediately because their merit is not deep enough. That means their character, yeah,、uh, it's not,、uh, it's not there yet. Easily swayed. Say I could not be swayed by one thousand dollars, but if you give me thirty million dollars, how many people can stand still and able to think clearly what I want to use this money for? Something like that. If people can write. Drive this fortune rather than being driven by the fortune. I'm using a very Chinese terms, 驾驭 So if you can drive above your desire, you're the master, and this desire or whatever it is is your tools to accumulate merits or to to plant even more、uh, good deeds. Then you are Buddha, Bodhisattva, sage. If we are ordinary people, we have certain level of merits but not full. When this merit comes in over the top, over the ability of us to exhibit, we will get driven by the servants and say get caught up in you know all that scandals and all that、uh, misconducts and all that、um, uh, even bribe or lobbying and all that kind of unwholesome leads. So back to the point, if you 取善无穷 you 修业者 so being good. Has endless、uh, opportunity, open up endless opportunity for you. So people who cultivate must not、um, forget about this. So in the old days, there is a saying, his old days, right, which is very back in the warring state. I think, 有志于功名者必得功名 So people who really wants to get into that, um, uh, get into a position of、uh, great eminence, uh. They will get it if they really have the ambition to get it. People who has ambition towards wealth,、right? they will get the wealth. People who has a will is like a tree has a root. If your will is firm and you fix on it, what you do need to do next after you set up your goal, your will to achieve it,、uh, is to be humble and always. Always、um, be convenient everywhere you could.、Uh, do not try to、um, be arrogant or jump the gun. Be patient. Basically, be patient. Humble is another word. Is patient. Only then you will able to touch. Well,、uh, what he say is the heaven and the earth. That means everything, everyone, every place. Because in Chinese we have a saying, 天时地利人和 To achieve something, you need to have the right timing. You have need to the right position, right place, and you need to have a harmonious people. People who work with you, people or you work with the people you、uh, who serve the same goal you are, as you are. And among these three, right timing cannot be compared to 
right place. Right place cannot be compared to harmonious people. So the people is the most important thing. If people are harmonious, even though this place is wrong, this time is wrong, it will be right. It will be set as straight. So back to the point is, um, that's what he said. If you have a view, have a goal for us, we want to go to Pure Land, same thing. So you need to be humble, you need to be hum 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 uh, humiliate, uh, be humble yourself. What do you mean? Be patient. Um, sometimes this happens, take it in, uh, reflect on it, resolve it. And always let others come first. Do not try to fight against others. So only then you'll be touching the heavens and earth. People will come to you, flock to you. So, Zhao Fu Yu Wo. So people who can make the fortune is yourself. The only person who give you fortune, make the fortune is yourself. So right now he's going back to his own reality. People who wants to ask for position or fame uh, in, through the imperial examination, a lot of them do not really want it. So they do not have a very stone, a steel wheel to get it. They just like, eh, um, you know, everyone's doing it, so I'm doing it. Obviously, when it's easy, they got in. But some people really got in because of their past fortune or something. Um, but most people who encounter difficulties, they usually retreat because they don't really want it. So people who do not really have the will to achieve that, they only do it because um, they, they want it. I mean, they only do it because, uh, because they feel like it at the time. Uh, so if they got it, they're happy. If they don't got it, they stop doing anything. They stop pursuing. So as mentioned, say, Wang Zhi Hao Le Yi Qi Qi Su Ji Hu. So, <clears throat> what did the last sentence did? Even now, I still don't understand by reading it. Mencius once say, if you can expand from the heart that seeks personal happiness to sharing happiness with all your subjects, and make them just as happy as you are, then surely the nation will prosper. Yeah, I just, I don't know how to connect these two. Basically, Mencius, just to give you a backdrop, because I share one of his words in my Facebook. Um, Mencius mentioned about this, is during the time of warring states, everyone's fighting to be the hegemony. Quite reflective of what we have right now in this world. Um, trying to be number one, the boss number one big, uh, country. And he uh, trying to persuade people instead of using the method of strong army conquers the weak nation, strong eats the weak, Darwinism. He's trying to use the way of Wangja, the way of the kings, kingship. That means ability to touch everyone to submit to you rather than using the swords. The swords is only number two. Number one is virtues. So that's that's the core concept. That's what Confucius is trying to do, and he didn't get uh, any kings that share his will. So Mencius told him that if you really, really want to be as good as Yao Shun Yu, the three heavenly emperor, uh, three emperors before the, the, the early dynasty, uh, who, who has ruled with virtues rather than swords, rather than just swords, you still need the swords, <coughs> but you don't use it to kill people. So men should say, if you really like uh, to to enjoy, you know, all this entertainment, you should share it with your people. And this is the context where he gives these topics. Why, how do you become number one among so many nations? And obviously we knew that Qing Dynasty used the sword. That means violence. Kill every opposition. That's his idea. Obviously, his dynasty lasts only for 15 years. But what Manchin say is, you need to expand everything. Expand whatever you like to all your people. So what you like, you share it with all your people. What you're angry about, you angry what the people angry about. Angry about high taxes, uh, high prices for necessities, unfair judgment from the ordinary people. If everything, every character you are, I'm just expanding what Mention say. If every character you are expands towards all people, so you like what the people like, you hate what the people hate, and people, as in the common group, the common folks, everyone just want to live a 
stable life. Not everyone wants to, you know, be number one. Anything. Most people just want a proper income, a proper securities from threat uh, from crime and all that. So this kind of mentality, if you expand to everyone, obviously you will be number one among all the nations. So about the kerji, it's the same thing. About this, it's the same thing. So that's it for the whole Liao Fan. Sorry for the long, long drag, um, because I started 20 minutes late. I'm going to open up the last 15 minutes to um, talk about not just the humility, but about everything. So I just have a topic. Uh, I just have one question, um, and you guys can talk about others. Is after learning the Liao Fan uh, four lessons, the knowing all that steps, what are the, um, what do we, uh, what are the concrete steps that we can uh, do, or what are the, uh, is there any effect Liao Fan had on us uh, in this truest sense uh, towards the way I treat my life? So does Liao Fan help me to uh, walk towards what closer towards the goal of changing uh, my life for better? That's my question. Ah, me, to, for. 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 Ah, me. Uh, may the merits and virtues accrue from this work um, dedicated to all the beings who are suffering from wars, from uh, COVID and all other calamities uh, and our coming creditors. Adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amin Thank you very much.